And we are live now. Hi, uh, this is Bob Boros, and this is my YouTube Jazz Dance channel, which is my jazz and tap dance life. And I have many different things on my channel with instruction and history and context and just different things that are going on um, within the field right now. And one thing I've been doing for a while is doing these live interviews with people who are very important in jazz dance and trying to bring that information um, out to um, the general public as to what's going on and what we need to be talking about and the things that are important to us, okay? So I want to welcome to today's uh, broadcast. I'm going to talk about that in a second. First, a little bit about the um, the channel. Um, with this lockdown that we've had, a lot of people have had to stay at home and watch things, and the channel is like growing exponentially right now. So right now I'm up to, as of today, 3,190 subscribers. So that is like quadruple of what I started with last year. So there's definitely a lot of interest um, in talking about jazz dance and finding out more information. So anyone who subscribed, thank you for that. Thank you for putting in the time and clicking notifications and staying current um, with what we're doing. Um, as for me, you know, my university teaching, of course, we're over for the year, we're in the summer period. I am doing two Zoom classes per week. And as you can see from behind me, this used to be my living room, uh, which is now a dance studio. And everything's been taking out and moving into the back room and the computers come out here. So life is trying to topsy-turvy right now. But I've been busy with that, doing those couple classes. I did have a class at Broadway Dance Center in New York City for TAP. And that's kind of on hold right now until things come back in New York. So we're still kind of in this flux state right now. But um, as you can see, and there's a Pilates machine back there um, to stay in shape. So this has become the dance studio um, in the meantime. Okay, today we are here to talk about jazz dance in university, a university program, which I have been involved with for many years. Um, but just how is jazz dance handled? What is the curriculum? What are the things people should look for? What are the proper ways to encompass all aspects of jazz dance within this program of study? And even if that's possible to do within a university program. Um, there's many ideas we can talk about. I won't go into that now, but some universities are very open to jazz and some maybe not so open to jazz. And maybe you've had that experience in the past too. Um, and um, so we're gonna be talking that, about that. Very quickly though, people who are watching, we do want you to check in, say hi, say where you're from. Um, if you have a question, please put your question in there and if we can fit it in, we'll definitely get that in and, and get your question answered. So this is meant to be a very, um, you know, go back and forth with our, our discussion and not just us talking and you as a viewer watching, okay? Today, um, I, oh, first of all, in terms of jazz dance and universities, as I said, there are many different programs and I reached out to many people to join in on this, this, this discussion. Um, some are just not available, some are not available now, but maybe in a couple of weeks. So there will be more um, interviews like this talking about jazz dance from other people who have many different ways of, of talking about it. So right today, um, I'm very happy to have Michael Williams, who is a professor of dance um, with the School of Dance at the University of Arizona, where there's a major, major jazz dance program, well, probably one of the biggest in the country right now. So he is waiting in the wings, and I'm going to bring him in here. So here's Michael. Hello. Good morning. Hey there. Good morning. Um, okay. Um, and and um, I'm very happy to have you on here because you're associated with the jazz dance program that is that is having very big impact on jazz dance in the United States, um, not only with your undergraduate program, but your graduate level program, which I know is placing many of your graduates in universities. So what they're learning at the University of Arizona is becoming something that's really going out there in, in many different ways. So it's uh, what you're doing is really important for us to hear about. So thank you for taking time to discuss that today. Thank you for having me. The um, I just finished my 28th year here at the University of Arizona. And mm -hmm. so wow. we can talk a, a little bit about that evolution, but um, I'm very, very proud of um, how this particular program has evolved and, um, and served our students and our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, before you did your 28 years that you've done in Arizona, I mean, you certainly had your own jazz dance um, history, what you learned, where you performed, and you were with uh, the Gus Giordano Jazz Dance Company in Chicago for quite a while. So maybe you could talk a little bit about what you learned in you, those years. What was your basis in jazz dance and how is that working with what you're doing now? Well, I... Um, I went to the Giordano school and then I got in the company mm -hmm. uh, 
and that was in the early 80s. Um, and so I danced with the company and taught at the school um, for a period of seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, my dancing with the company was not quite that long, but, but um, teaching at the school. And during that time, I also, um, Gus really liked that we would, when we were, you know, we, he really liked that you could um, do several kinds of things. And so he really thought um, dance was about not only being a jazz dancer, a concert jazz dancer at that point in time, but also just like pulling everything else in um, at his school, which I think is really important and something that we have modeled at the University of Arizona. He believed in the total dancer. And so the school was really famous for jazz dance, of course, but there was ballet, there was modern, there was tap, mm -hmm. um, there was even hip hop at uh, one point mm -hmm. in time there. So. Um, I liked his openness to um, bringing in as many aspects as you could to, um, you know, to increase and stimulate what was being done in jazz dance at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so is learning the, the Giordano technique, is that the foundation of what you do or have you studied with other uh, jazz people and brought other aspects into your approach, or are you mainly just you? I'm talking about you yourself, not not your your university yeah. program, but it's, it's right. like Giordano, your thing. Giordano is what my training was. Um, mm -hmm. I I started late actually, and so I started as a beginner at the Giordano School. So uh -huh. I went I went through the program. Uh, from beginning to advanced and then was in the company. Um, so I understood the methodology that was, uh, was used at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that methodology, I still incorporate. I don't know that I, that I teach so much in a strict Giordano form. Um, and it's not because I don't believe in it. I just think that there are, is now um, other things that are important to um, to be acknowledged and to be mm -hmm. um, you know to be uh, <laughs> put, put together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, now, how, a little jazz thing. There you go. A little jazz hands there. Now, how um, how does this then work with? the developing program, because certainly it wasn't the same in, in the beginning of the University of Arizona program as it is now. I'm sure it's developed tremendously over 28 years. So in terms of the jazz or the Giordano jazz dance heritage, how was that built into what started your program? And has it changed or is the Giordano idea and sort of philosophy still sort of a governing influence uh, you know, philosophically in terms of what is done in your program? Well, three out of our four jazz professors um, danced in the Giordano company. Mm -hmm. So so that is a very strong Giordano background. Right. I, I think that, um, I think that all three of us, and then, you know, um, one of our other teachers was, um, was someone who was a little bit more commercial and modern. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, <laughs> commercial and modern, she, she danced in modern um, components. She danced in national tours of um, musical theater. And so anyway, there is a diversity in background of all of us. Um, one of our, one of my other colleagues, um, is Sam Watson, who was mm -hmm. in the Giordano Company, and then he was also in Modern Companies. He teaches both modern and jazz there. Autumn Ekman, who is uh, who was the resident choreographer for Giordano Jazz Dance, uh, or is now it's called Giordano Dance Chicago, mm -hmm. um, is, is someone who had 
she danced in Hubbard Street as well as Giordano. Mm -hmm, sure. and, and so she has a modern background. She also danced in ballet companies. So she teaches all three. She teaches ballet, modern, and jazz. And so all of us, and I teach tap as well as, uh, as jazz. So I think that we're familiar in that way. And so I think that all of us bring, we have that Giordano seed and that, and we grew that Giordano plant in our lifetime mm -hmm. um, and our careers. Um, but we have so many other things that we add in and pull from and, uh, and look at what the current, um, the current needs of, of the profession are. And, mm -hmm. and I love that we're triple track. Um, mm -hmm. so, so the dancers have to study ballet, modern and jazz. Um, and so that I think is a wonderful foundation for a dancer mm -hmm. because then they can, they can actually function in a real traditional way or they can function in a variety of contemporary ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let me, because you're kind of getting into area where I wanted to go next, talking about the program. So it's 28 years or so, or at least you've been there in, in development. And was there a jazz program there prior to you? And what was the reasoning why it was felt that this was so important to match this up with the other areas, which mainly in the universities would be ballet and modern? Because many universities will only have jazz as an elective or something as a very side thing. So what was the what was the feeling there that someone said, we want this, we want this to happen here? How did that come about? And while you're doing that, I'm going to flip to a different screen and we'll show a few photos from the School of Dance. So why don't you talk over that while I do that? Okay. Well, when I first came, I was actually hired to um, start a jazz component. But at that point in time, the jazz component was not going to be something that was going to, um, that it was, it was something that was still going to be an elective. When I came, jazz was an elective. Mm -hmm. And then with, uh, but it is our director, Jory Hancock, who was a professional ballet dancer. Um, and he believed that the program would grow if there was a jazz component in some way. And so I was hired to do that. But at the same time, um, we didn't change the curriculum uh, that that is like you know, it takes a village to change a curriculum, and <laughs> okay. and th and thankfully we had the we had the people who were willing to take um, the chance, and so we added the requirement. It's sort of like a tier system when we when we first did it. So we let's say you had to take ballet, modern and jazz at the 200 level. And then you had to take ballet and modern at the 300 level. And then mm -hmm. you take ballet at the 400 level. So you would be a, a ballet emphasis. Mm -hmm. But but you know, as, as it evolved, um, it m turned more into, you know, like a, a, an equal, an equal mm -hmm. thing because, because the students that we were attracting were people who wanted to be trained in all three mm -hmm. and have expertise mm -hmm. in all three. And the beautiful thing about our program, I think, uh, when I'm talking about a village, is that many of us have danced in multiple, I mean, I've trained in ballet, I've studied modern, I'm a jazz and tap guy, but, mm -hmm. I, but I bring the awareness of what they're doing in the ballet classes, what they're doing in the modern classes. And if there's things that I realize that could be implemented as a concept and do it in a jazz way, then mm -hmm. um, we're fusing, we're fusing mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. and um, delivery. And I think that actually now the repertoire when, that you look at, uh, you know, 
all over is really a fusion of multiple things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so sure. I, I love that about our particular program. And I love that about as a, as a concept. And like I said before, that is a concept that Gus had. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's staying true to what his um, initial vision um, about dance mm -hmm. training was. Sure. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this too. I mean, cause like I said, I've been in universities many years too. And I know that there, there can be ideas where we say that ballet, modern and jazz have a sort of an equal emphasis or are represented fairly strongly. But I know that was one case when I was at the university of California at Irvine. But then if you took a look at it, there were four ballet, full-time ballet professors. There were four full-time modern professors and there was only me covering jazz and tap and musical theater. So like, so even though like it's out there that we are giving, you know, credence to everything, really the resources are not there. So have you been able to do that or, or has the program been able to develop in that way that there is at least a significant equality, you know, of, of resources or, or that idea that it's, it isn't true equal to the other areas or is it something where still more, more credence is given to the other um, areas in dance. Well, we have ten faculty, and mm -hmm. one of our ten one of our of our ten faculty is our music person. So she is not really teaching technique. Mm -hmm. So so like I said, um, four of us teach jazz out of nine. Oh, well, that's great. And yeah. uh, and then you know, but like one of them of the jazz teachers teaches ballet, modern, and jazz. And mm -hmm. two of the other jazz teachers teach modern and jazz. And I teach tap and jazz. It wasn't always like that. When mm -hmm. we first started, I mean, this is an evolution. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's an evolution for us. And I'm really, I'm really um, thrilled that, that it has evolved in the way that it has because it is an equal component. And and Bob, if I can tell you one more thing about the mm -hmm. pro program is that sure. it's it's not only about technique. When I first mm -hmm. when I first got to the to the program, dance history was taught, but there was no jazz history. Mm -hmm. There was no jazz history because basically, in some of the you know dance history books, jazz dance is not even recognized, mm -hmm. and so we've evolved the program to be inclusive, not only in technique and in repertoire, but also it has gone into our academic awarenesses and making that mm -hmm. um, inclusive. And, you know, for the longest time when uh, choreography was taught here, it was not taught at all about a ballet perspective. It was all about modern. Mm -hmm. And so now our, now our choreography classes are not just about modern. Mm -hmm. Our choreography classes are about creating movement. And if it's in, uh, if someone's wanting to create something that's more balletic, okay. Um, if someone's wanting to choreograph something that is kind of a fusion of all of them, right. Then, Fabulous. Mm -hmm. and, and so in, in any way, that is how our curriculum has um, has evolved to be inclusive and to be supportive of mm -hmm. the individual genres and the fusion of them as well. OK, well, this is great because you're like doing a segue right into what I want to talk about next. So okay. uh, thank you for that. So this is not particularly about the program. Um, where you're at, but like maybe even just jazz dance in your in a perfect world, you know, what are the areas that needed to be covered for somebody who says, I want to do a serious study of jazz dance, whether it's four years or a graduate level degree, what are the different areas or aspects that somebody should be studying um, so that they can come out of that program and say, I'm fully versed, I'm fully educated, I'm fully trained, I'm ready to start my career what would those individual areas be? Well, and, and I think that maybe you're talking about 
someone who's going to be a performer. But I think that what happens with people's dance career um, is that they're a performer and then they're a teacher and then maybe they're doing some mm -hmm. other so a choreographer, whatever it might be. Um, and so the the thing that I think you have to know is like in ballet, you have to know the fundamentals of the past because those things are tried and true. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of jazz dance, you need to know what those frameworks were. And I'm not just talking about Giordano and Luigi and whomever else, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about African dance. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how and when and where jazz dance came from Africa to, and jazz music came to the Americas. And so you need to know all that, not only in knowledge, but you need to know enough about that in movement base mm -hmm. so that you're aware of where the next phase is. Because, right. the, because the next phase is based on what preceded it. Mm -hmm. And so if you have enough knowledge about the phases that proceeded now, then you are, you have studied your, you've mm -hmm. studied the, the subject fully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. I, I think that full subject um, exploration is important. And you can't do all of it in a technique class. That's the beautiful thing about a university. I, I loved my um, training and experiences um, in the Giordano school, um, but I didn't know history so much mm -hmm. unless I was like looking at it myself. So mm -hmm. um, that's a beautiful thing about the, about mm -hmm. the university system um, that is, inclusive mm -hmm. okay all right michael i'm going to pull you back into when you were like talking a little bit about technique um and i know as you said a lot of times people now when they see jazz sense technique all right they're going to pull names of some of the you know the more publicized figures you know over the history of maddox and luigi and giordano and, and people like that but you know as you said you know there is a very necessary need particularly if young people have never been experienced this is to study the vernacular dance and the roots of dance and how african dance developed in, into what is here now um and that's going to be a very hot topic in the future I, I i'm really seeing that out there there's a lot of talk about it and how is this going to now be represented in jazz dance programs so is there something within the program you have now um, at your school of dance that brings those those areas of study into what people will be opened up to? Or is this something that still people kind of have to, to go out on their own? Um, I mean, I could, I'll, I'm talking a lot about me at the same time, so you can think about that for a second. I can just go back to when I was a professor at the University of California at Irvine, and I was head of the jazz dance, and there was no study of vernacular jazz dancing at all. So there was a program for world dance, so they would have flamenco, they had East Indian dance, they would have Slavic dances. And I proposed, because I had met Chester Whitmore in Los Angeles, and he's the man for, for that style of dance. And I said, let's, let's get Chester down here under the guise of world dance. And that way we can have it offered as an elective and people can study it. And actually, I mean, I'll just say this, people on my faculty shot it down because they said, well, that vernacular dance is a social dance. It is not a folk dance and therefore does not qualify under this guise of, of world dance. <laughs> so, I mean, there was just this idea of, you know, we really don't even need to have that in our program. You know, even though, uh, you know, we're supposed to say we do jazz here and people can come study jazz. So that's what I encountered. Now, this was a while ago. This was probably at least 15 years ago. So maybe the thinking is a little bit different, but how does that translate into what you are able to do or what the feeling is within your department? Is there a, you know, a visibility for this form of dance, which was the building blocks of jazz dance and needs to be explored by somebody who claims to be you know, an informed jazz dancer? Well, I know that, that your situation um, is, 
is not unique in the country mm -hmm. um, where um, th where jazz dance is often um, looked at as entertainment and has no artistic value. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, whatever the whatever the thought is um, that is fairly narrow. Um, mm -hmm. It is narrow. And so I, like I said, 28 years, it's evolved. Um, and it's because of, of mutual respect among mm -hmm. my colleagues. Mm -hmm. And I know that I am extremely lucky in that way, that mm -hmm. there is the mutual respect that any idea that seems to better inform, better educate, better prepare our students for a career, um, what they need to know. I mean, we just added, um, you know, we just added hip hop to our curriculum. It's an elective, but you know, some of our dancers that are going to go work somewhere. If they, mm -hmm. if they get a little bit of background, then they'll have, um, a better chance at an audition. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not what is going on in our traditional, in our traditional right. um, uh, curricular component. But, but we're aware of it and we've made it an elective. And, um, you know, I think all of that's really good. I think, mm -hmm. am I saying the same stuff over and over? <laughs> Well, you know, we're, we're coming at things from different angles, so it's good to, to see it from that way. All right, I'm going to take the same idea because we were talking a little bit about technique, but also push it into two other areas which you did mention, which were choreography for jazz dance and history in jazz dance. So in terms of choreography for jazz dance, I mean, I would agree with you uh, that in, in most programs, the, the choreography track that you will do is basically oriented towards modern dance. Yes. And there is very little idea of any concepts specific to jazz dance choreography that students might have within the normal track. Maybe there are an elective or a special topics course or independent study, something like that, that the student could, um, you know, examine on their own. So how, how are aspects that are germane to jazz dance choreography, how are you able to address those within your program so the students have that information? Well, a couple of ways. One is that, I, as I said, the choreography track is uh, is not just a modern concept. Mm -hmm. um, so they are including um, in some of their choreographic exercises, they're including um, concepts that the students might want to explore in um, in different ways. And of course, with jazz dance, um, choreographically, there is the aspects of rhythm that is totally different from mm -hmm. the other components uh, that we were talking about. Um, the way of uh, maybe isolating um, and maneuvering the torso is um, in a different, if, in, is a different quality and, and mm -hmm. um, construction. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, being inclusive of a musical accompaniment that is um, that could be jazz, mm -hmm. or could be um, could be anything. But mm -hmm. but the idea is that the the instructors of that choreography class can then articulate. Uh, you know, if you're really wanting to make this jazzier, maybe you would uh, look at how you're playing with the rhythmic structure of the, mm -hmm. of the, um, uh, you know, of the movement vocabulary. So there are uh, people who are teaching, faculty members who are teaching your choreography track in some way, either have a knowledge of, or maybe were a jazz dancer at some point. So they can bring a different perspective. They're not just totally modern dance person who's teaching that course. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. That's that's a change. That's a you know a different idea than a, than a lot of universities. Particularly, I mean, I know for me, again, talking about University of California at Irvine, um, 
it was like it was to be the modern dance way. This is the way you were to teach it. And we really aren't going to have a jazz dance person teach that because that's not the thing. It's got to be done in a certain way. So to have a, a faculty member who has either an open mind or can design assignments that can address different areas and different interests of the students um, to allow them to explore other things would be would be good. Now I'm going to go on. Now you also mentioned history, and again I'll you know I'll pull another story from my hat. Uh, when I did my graduate work at um, New York University, and I was in the Gallatin division. I was not in um, Steinert or I was not in the Tisch School, but I did have a history course with Deborah Jowett, who was one of the big people in jazz dance history and, and, and critique. And within that semester course. It was all about ballet, it was about modern, it was all about Western forms. There was one day about jazz dance and, and African forms, and she did not teach it. She brought in a fellow named Joe Nash, who was a big expert. So he talked the one day about it. And so I had to do, as part of my work at, um, at uh, NYU, was to do my own independent study, go into the dance collection at Lincoln Center and do all my own research and come up with, with my information. So now, hopefully, we're knowing more and offering more to our students. Um, what information on jazz dance history um, can your students get? Is there a separate course or is there a, a, a decent sized module within the dance history track? How do they find out about the history of jazz dance? It's part of the course. Mm -hmm. It's inclusive. Of course, with history, you start at the beginning and then you go and then if you um, only look at the history of ballet in modern, then you're leaving out all mm -hmm. of, uh, including the vernacular forms, including social dance, including mm -hmm. um, jazz dance, including tap dance, um, mm -hmm. and even including what's going on, where all of this has led to today. Mm -hmm. And, um, our course has been redesigned to um, be inclusive of all that. And we have, um, we have a, a, a dance history course that the freshmen take their freshman year. Mm -hmm. And then they take a second course that has more writing components um, in this, but, but dance history is what it is. And they even have to reconstruct, um, do a reconstruction, a physical reconstruction from mm -hmm. the past. And that can, that can either be with um, a solo or a duet or something, but they, they actually look at repertoire and then do a reconstruction where they're actually having to feel the time, feel the space, feel, um, what that repertoire was and not just look at it, not just look at it or read about it, but actually inhabit it. And so I, th and, and, and we've moved all of our dance history to the freshman year because we believe that the freshman year is where then they will have a better understanding for the remaining studies. Um, and that, that has seemed to be really a great new um, way for us to approach it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do you find that the new students who come in um, with their knowledge of jazz from their high school and, and middle school years, um, are they just really eyes opened up as to where the, the real history of jazz dance is? Oh, absolutely. Did, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, they know um, music videos. Mm -hmm. and they and they know dance competitions mm -hmm. um and music videos and dance competitions i love them I mean, <laughs> it's, it's cool but mm -hmm. that's that's not all there is or all there was or all that brought us to now so mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that answer oh, okay um i know let me ask you this uh, i mean it's a, a big uh over association that kind of hangs over all dance departments is the American College Dance Association, which used to be ACDFA and now it's ACDA. And so usually to represent um, each school, there's usually like a student piece and a faculty piece and that will be performed, adjudicated, 
And it really is kind of known as everyone trying to be as artistic as possible. And I know in the past I have felt in multiple universities I've taught at, um, just like a pushback of having jazz dance represent the school to say, all right, this is who we are. We have a jazz dance component. So does, does your um, school of dance participate in ACDA? And if so, do they or would they bring a jazz dance to represent the school? We, um, we don't do it as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. um, and of course that was um, a choice that we made and it was not necessarily about what we uh, thought the value of it was. It was just, we just had to figure out where we're going to place our resources for our, our student body. Um, and so I've, you know, I've been one of those adjudicators at, at this. And so I know that jazz dance um, is very slimly represented, but part of it is because jazz dance is not so represented in our, in our university systems. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're right. I think that what you're wanting to do is to, you know, do whatever, uh, present whatever you think is the most cutting edge, mm -hmm. uh, the most um, artistic, whatever it might be. Um, and so a lot of times that is figured to be something that is in, you know, modern contemporary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've felt some pushback in, in many different ways um, with that attitude. So it would be nice to be able to see jazz dance represented in that artistic format and number one and number two be accepted by the program as yes, we are proud of this, that this is part of who we are, you know, and not that, oh my, that's the kind of thing we want to keep on the side and, and not be out there as, as a very visible aspect of our program. And Bob, um, and Bob yeah, um, let, sure. me just, let me just add, and I'm not, I'm not being critical. I'm just being an observer. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time, the adjudicators that are on these at these festivals mm -hmm. are they're modern people. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I'm not mm -hmm. saying all the time, mm -hmm. but um, but so you got it. Yeah. Now, are you certified by um, NASD? No. Okay. All right, because oh, yes, in a yes, we are and Na National Association of Schools of Dance, and I know yeah. there's a certification. I don't have a lot of experience, but when I was at Radford University, they wanted us to go through that loophole to become certified. And as we looked into it, I mean, there is kind of guidelines as to what a proper track of study would be, and they were strongly in modern dance, strongly in ballet, and jazz dance was not something that, yes, someone, they should have jazz dance. It was just like listed as an elective sort of um, sort of idea. So it's not that you have to do that to be certified by them, but that's what their thinking is, you know? And so again, it goes to the value of what jazz dance is to the program. In, in, in terms of NASD, um, it is really, what, what you're doing is you're presenting what it is that your university is um, is what what your underlying mission and, and vision and values are, mm -hmm. and if you and it really takes a lot of uh, time to you know get certified and you know every ten years or so you have to be recertified and so mm -hmm. yes we are and we have always been applauded uh, by them for our um, inclusion of not only inclusion, but our equal emphasis in jazz. And so that's, um, you know, the evaluators that came, um, they were applauding that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to shift this a little bit. And this is a, it's, it's a, it's a good question. It's a deep question. Um, there is like movement now that's looking back at the history of many things in our country. Um, and particular jazz dance history, what's written can be uh, one of those things and the value of the root of jazz dancing um, in relation to other forms and styles of jazz dancing that have become 
very visible and probably more visible than what the original route was at that time. And um, the idea of maintaining the integrity of the route, which means it's not going to have a Eurocentric grafting onto it, which is kind of what has happened in, in many ways. And I think that that moving in that direction and thinking in that direction is going to be a very new and big thought in the future. And I don't know if that's something that within your program, is that something that people are talking about? Is there an idea about that? Or is that something that's still like out there so much and it will maybe it will be here in a, uh, in a, in a, in a new time. Well, you know, I, I always know that um, I know where my river is running. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what tributaries are going to come into my river. But what those tributaries are, are actually things that form part of my river. Mm -hmm. And so I, I try not to get hung up on a lot of those like really you know, really out there, like the movement is going here and what is the past? And I, I try to look at the past. I try to look at the present and I try to, with my knowledge of the past and present, envision what I am with all these tributaries that are coming at me, mm -hmm. uh, envision where we're gonna eventually get to a, a new place on mm -hmm. the river. Um, I don't know if that analogy works, but um, it's, it's sort of seemed to work for me at the moment. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I don't know that that was kind of deep and kind of broad and kind of, um, I yeah, don't well, know. Every, everything now is very conceptual right now because people are just saying, Hey, wait a minute, what happened in the past? Let's relook at this. So we're not there yet, but we're at the point where we realize hey, we need to stop and gather right now and, and make changes. Well, and I think that um, stopping and gathering is, is um, fundamentally um, required for us to continue to do. And I think stop and relooking um, and um, understanding not only what dance is historically, but also understanding what dance historically was in terms of um, how it felt and how it was perceived. Mm -hmm. And um, I continue to do that. And that's, mm -hmm. that, that's part of looking at the history. That's part of looking into the future. That's part of like being importantly in the present, which has all of those concepts. In mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, I'm going to shift gears here because um, within your program, you have a, a very well-developed and well-attended um, summer jazz dance festival and workshop. It's not, it's not summer. It's not it, the summer? No, you don't want to do anything in Tucson in the summer. Well, all right. <laughs> when, when, what time of year does it happen then? It typically happens. Uh, this is the Arizona Jazz Dance Showcase, um, and I direct that uh, proudly. And we have, uh, and it's usually done in the fall, early fall. Mm -hmm. um, this year we have postponed it, um, but I'll let you see. I'll let you watch. This is a wrap up of our event in October 2019, just last year. Mm hmm. So now, how many people do you draw each time? How many dancers? Uh, between 850 and 1200. That is massive. Now, where are they coming from? Are they coming from all over the country or are they mostly coming from your general area? They're coming from all over the country. Okay. And who are your faculty members? Um, last year we had Marguerite Derricks, um, mm -hmm. who I just couldn't believe that she was willing to do it. Um, 
And so we've had Marguerite Derricks, we've had Anne Ranking, we've had mm -hmm. Joe Train, we've had Joe Lynn Terry, um, we've had, um, you know, many, many, like back in the day, we had Gus, we had, um, we had, um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking well. We've mm -hmm. had a lot, we've had a lot. And okay. The, and the beauty of it is that um, the professionals that I bring in to teach also then learn about our program. And mm -hmm. so they come in and experience us. We bring them in and we get to experience them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really has been a wonderful opportunity for us to um, broaden the knowledge of what we're doing here at the University of Arizona mm -hmm. through those professionals that have been uh, visiting artists. Okay. All right, now taking what you just mentioned about your program, and even touched on this a little bit earlier because we talked about what younger dancers are bringing with them in terms of their knowledge and understanding of jazz dance when they come to the university level. So now you're seeing a, a very big group of, of, of pre-college students, I would imagine, who are, who are doing this program. So what do they know? What do they not know? What do they need to know? You know, how, how is their training these days in jazz dance at that age? And, and what is good and what's missing? Well, I'll tell you the things that are good. Um, the things that are good is that dancers are more technically developed uh, now through their, um, you know, through their dance programs than um, we were uh, at that age and talking oh. their technical development. Um, okay, right. I'm, I'm going to stop you there. I want you to keep talking. But now you say technical development. Can you define that a little bit more? Like, what do you mean by technical development? Technical development in jazz dance. Technical development in jazz dance is um, your ability to extend, your ability to uh, jump in different ways, your ability to... Um, do multiple pirouettes. And it's not really about doing multiple pirouettes, but you have to be on your leg. If you're gonna do multiple pirouettes, like three or more, then you have to have placement. You have to have um, all kinds of things that are, are, are the root of being able to do the pirouette, but that root of being able to do the pirouette is something that's going to manifest itself out into your ability to um, do other movement vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Now, if students are, are spending a lot of time working on those things, um, do you feel that they are also bringing an opposite end of that in terms of musicality, movement and plie, having different parts of the body moving at different times? Do they have that sense of, of, of really strong roots of jazz fluidity in their body or are they mostly they're coming in very lifted and they can knock out lots of turns and, and do big uh, big open positions do they have both of those these days well you know it's according to the age group um i think that i think the age group of course that is younger like i'm talking like you know junior high i'll say um mm -hmm. Their sensitivity, uh, because I, you know, I study music and I have a degree in music. Mm -hmm. And so uh, their sensitivity to musicality is, is both learned and experienced. And so that is not for, in my mind, it's really great if this junior high kid has learned all of this stuff that they can do with their body. And mm -hmm. you, as you described it, it might be rigid, uh, mm -hmm. but it also might be, um, it might have some uh, studied fluidity to it. 
And so I think that um, all of that, I know that I, as a musician, got better when I was older. And the more I studied music, the more I could nuance it. And I believe the same thing to be true for dance. And so I don't know that it's about um, anything other than encouraging nuance, mm -hmm. finding ways to um, both demonstrate it and uh, find ways to physicalize it. Um, all those things, I think, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know, you know, the chicken or the egg. I don't know which one. I, 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 I get confused. I try to mm -hmm. juggle all of that. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I believe that it's um, something that is, that walks hand in hand mm -hmm. as you, as you mature and develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think there's a, a sense of musicality from being exposed to many different types of music. So that might be something And you being a musician, um, you know, certainly would recognize that. So just to bring that different feeling, which is going to come into the body, because jazz really needs to be a feeling based performance thing. You Absolutely. Know, the visual that we're looking from the outside of the box to, to make that work. And right. I think that's something that, that younger people can uh, can work on and teachers can work on with them uh, to be able to develop the musicality and then also the multi polycentric aspect of how the body moves and to be able, as you said, people have to be uh, able to do many things. So they got to be able to go from I'm here to I'm here and go back to here. They have to have that ability to be able to just jump back and forth. And hopefully the, the looseness is still something that's being developed in their jazz dance classes um and not just working on you know the i don't want to say the tricks but you know working on turns and, and things like that so that would be cool all right i'm going to you with one last question and this is a an interesting question is something that we talked about before about you know my experience i mean the both of us we came up creating our jazz dance careers by going into working with people who were you know known as masters of jazz dance sort of indenturing yourself to somebody for many, many years. You were with Gus Giordano, I was with Matt Maddox and other people that I have studied with um, and sort of like found our own way through this jazz dance uh, life because there wasn't university programs. You didn't go to college. You might say you went to New York and you studied with you know many people who were there. Now we have programs. You are now a big part of the program at the University of Arizona. Other people are creating their own programs. So in terms of that initial way of learning that we did, and now this sort of new way of, no, you go to college, um, can they be equal? Can they be of equal value to the dancer um, is is somebody who goes to college missing out on that aspect of no I worked for seven years with somebody who was you know one of the great masters of of jazz dance um, how is that going to all affect how jazz dance develops and I'm saying a lot of things here so if you can sort of root around in this whole big bag of stuff I just mentioned and maybe pull something out and said, all right, I'll, I'll respond in this way. Cause I'm just looking at the way I learned. And even though I've taught for 25 years in universities, I didn't learn in a university. So I say what I know came from not from a university. So what is this thing about university training now that is going to be the equal of that other way? Is it better? Is, is there things missing? I don't okay. know. What do you think about that? Well, I, I'm in the same boat, you know, yeah. when, when I, um, I got my degree in music and then I went, I went to the Giordano school. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I learned and developed and worked professionally, both in the company and in many different aspects of the commercial world and musical theater, um, all that stuff. Um, but when I was hired at the university of Arizona, I was hired because I had professional experience. Mm -hmm. and, and we at the University of Arizona are looking because we have a BFA, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and we have an MFA, a Master of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so we are sort of a professional track kind of school. And so all of our professors danced professionally. And some of them have advanced degrees and some of them just have their degree, their professional equivalency is what um, mm -hmm. universities sometimes call it. And it's frowned upon um, unless you have someone uh, who can defend it. And Jory Hancock, our director, is mm -hmm. uh, someone who is a master of, you know, de <laughs> defending, right. defend, defending the professional, um, the professional Equivalent. career equivalency yeah. for yeah. our particular kind of program. Um, do I think one is better than the other? I think both are valid. I do think that now, um, if you can find the right kind of program, um, I think that a university program that is um, that is kind of like a ours is kind of like a conservatory within mm -hmm. a major, you know, tier, uh, a, a major university. Right, um, a liberal and, arts program. Yeah, and so we're but we're kind of like conservatory ish, mm -hmm. um, and so I think that we're a lot like. Um, you know, getting training in um, with with some with some company with some master uh, mm -hmm. for a period of time, but I think I think everything is valid, um, mm -hmm. I, but I do think that there is more um, opportunity for study because when you're when you're when you're doing this thing over here that mm -hmm. is the the profession only. Uh, or the profession degree, not profession degree. Mm -hmm. the, you know, like like you, mathematics, me, mm -hmm. Giordano. Then that was certainly valid then, and still valid now. Mm -hmm. um, but at a university that has, you know, like you're able to study history, you're able to study composition. I mean, I learned to choreograph by choreographing. Mm -hmm. I never, I never took a choreography class. I have never taken a choreography class either. So, I'm you know, proud of it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, but there is that opportunity um, that is, that, that seems to be a little fuller in my mind, but maybe that's because um, I'm an, an invested university professor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Michael, thank you. Thank oh, you thank you. I'm time with us and bringing us all this information. And this is great, things we all need to hear. You have a wonderful program there, and I'm sure people will be interested. I know many people have come out of that program and are now working in serious jobs, whether it's in performance or whether it's in academia, one or the other, they're, they're doing some great things. So lots of good things are happening out there in Arizona due to your, your passion for what you do, right? Mm -hmm. After Thank a long you. career and then 28 years in, in, I know 28 years in academia, boy, that's, that can be a lot um, <laughs> to, to deal with, but you're, you're making it happen there. So thank you for spending time with us today. I appreciate it. And, thank you. Um, I wish you the best in the future. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. If you hang in there, I'm going to take you out, but then I'll talk to you for a second after we're finished and okay. we'll wrap this up. Okay. All right. How long? Okay. Thank you. All right. So that was Michael Williams, and he's a professor of dance at the University of Arizona. And that's a school of dance there, which is even bigger than a dance department. So they have a lot going on there, a lot of interest in uh, jazz dance in many different ways. So hopefully you've gotten some information um, about what goes on there and what is possible within the university um, jazz dance training program from there. Okay. So my name is Bob Boros. This is my Jazz and Tap Dance Life. That's the name of my YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. All you got to do is, um, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're not going to have that. Uh, well, maybe you can do it. I'm not sure if it's on there because it's not actually on my on my website. But subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the uh, notifications bell so you always know. And I'm going to be doing another interview this coming Thursday, July the 2nd. And it's going to be 10 a.m. 
And this time I'll be talking about musical theater curriculum, um, which are just exploding everywhere. It seems like every school now has the musical theater program. Um, and I will have Lauren Gall on from uh, Pace University and also Mary Robert, who is with uh, Shenandoah University in Winchester, Virginia. And they'll be talking about their different aspects that they see within musical training program. Okay. So thank you all for watching. We had a steady uh, group of people who stayed in there the whole time. I can see who's here. Um, this will be archived so people can watch it in the future. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you very soon.